Hello there. This is a really cool triaxial pneumicron mechanical clock designed by Shura, link down below, that I'd love to install in my makerspace with maybe a few upgrades. This should be a two-parter. First off, let's build the clock. I should also mention that I got the motor and idea for this clock from the Alien 3D Maker Box. I've not built every project I've gotten, but it's a cool way to keep making things, especially when you've got a lot going on. Link to them below too. There's no affiliates or paid promotion here, just giving credit where it's due. The first step is of course to print out all the parts. I found that the tolerances in this build are a bit loose, but not so much as to be problematic. However, there's no bearings in this clock, all the rotations and movements are plastic on plastic, so I chose to print most of these parts in PLA. I printed the numbers in PETG, mainly because I had black PETG loaded and I thought it would look nice. I printed most of the parts on the Prusa XL because it's quite a large build and the big build plate really helps with that. However, I did print some of these on the bamboo as well. Once all the parts are done printing, glue or weld the numbers onto their plates. I did play with a soldering iron to weld the first clock together. It was uh, taking a lot longer than just using super glue. It took me a bit to puzzle out the numbers as well, but the pips on the numbers aren't uniform. There's little pegs on the back. For instance, the 4 has pips on the far right side, and once you get one of the numbers in place, you count up or down from there. Pro tip is to place them all before you start gluing, or you might have to cut off and reprint some parts. For this initial build, the biker controller is just counting ticks of its internal oscillator and then outputting minutes to the stepper motor. I'd like to upgrade the system to get time off the internet and know actually what time it is on the clock as well, but both of those things require a little bit more work. In terms of other prints, the build uses 2mm tapping screws, a 28BYJ-48 stepper motor, ULN2003 driver board, which is just an array of Darlington transistors, and basically any microcontroller. Alright, so first we assemble the midgets digit, which is directly connected to the motor and slides around in this two-part frame. Only attach the top and bottom now, the middle screw also connects to another part of the frame. The minute wheel turns the tens of minute wheel with this pip down here, and eventually this gear turns the hour drum with this arm here. The coolest thing about this clock is that it runs from a single motor, so in order to be a clock, the motor just needs to turn this dial one-tenth of rotation every minute. That's why the control can be so simple. But if this is going to be in the makerspace, it needs to be somewhere where it can reset itself and doesn't require any maintenance or uh, fine tuning. You do need to carefully line up these gears. There are two dashes on them so that when they line up, the minutes, tens of minutes wheel will turn the hour wheel. Now I mistakenly put the hour wheel on here. It should actually go on after you put on the little arms and install the motor. We'll skip through this so I can, you know, show you the right way to do it after I do it the wrong way. The two extra little arm parts here help to center the tens of minutes wheel and the hour wheel. You'll see them as we install those. Only a 2mm screw, but I'm still kind of impressed that I was able to snap the head right off. Goodness. So 
So here the motor is installed before the hour wheel and it's installed with two screws. I did need to find a couple of uh, two millimeter washers because the motor lugs are too big for the two millimeter screws. The drive gear simply press fits onto the motor. It hasn't uh, caused any problems and it's actually captured by the wheel itself so I don't expect it to work its way loose even over a long duration operation. And now the last thing to go on is the hour wheel. It pops right into the slot there and then is supported by the rightmost bracket. You also need to secure the front face plate to the bracket. That fully locks it in place. And then it'll secure to the base with I think three screws. pretty and functional. You don't need to worry about the tens of minutes and the hour hand uh, drum displaying the right time. They always move in steps once these uh, guys are hooked up. However, this is a pretty terrible way to run a clock. The internal oscillator on your microcontroller isn't very stable, varies with temperature and even processor load on some controllers. Of course, you could install a real-time clock module so that it would count each minute very accurately, and this is a good way to run the clock offline. However, I'm using a Wemos D1 module on this, which has a Wi-Fi chip built in. I can simply use the NTP server to grab whenever the minutes change and modify my clock accordingly. It would be even better if the clock knew what time was displayed on it. You can see it's very easy to set with your fingers here, but the right control has no way of knowing what time is being displayed. I've got some ideas to add a simple sensor to this, but we're going to do that next time. For now, thanks for watching, enjoy the clock, and happy printing.